What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and we review a lot of phones this year, so in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the top phones in the second half of 2019, as well as in the end, which one is my favorite and my current daily driver, which some of you guys already know. So earlier in the year, I did do a video at around the halfway point of the best phones that came up between January and kind of June. But now we're near the end of the year, and the second half of the year definitely went by much faster than the first half, and we're covering the phones that came out in the second half, because to cover all of them in one video would take just too long. Some companies are making two to three phones a year, whereas others are making four to five. So let's just go ahead and get started, and there's going to be a giveaway in this video as well. So I think the first company that had a really good year and really pushed that to the second half as well is OnePlus. This is their newest phone and that is a 7T and I feel like it is actually one of my favorite Android phones at the moment because a lot of the great things in the 7 Pro were brought over to the 7T but also a few little design differences that actually make me like it more. This phone has a 6.55 inch display and it is a 90 hertz refresh rate which is amazing and I feel like every phone in 2020 has to have that. There's also a triple camera setup on the back including a 48 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephoto and although it is a pretty solid camera there's definitely even better options out there but for the price point and with everything else that you're getting I feel like it's an unbeatable device. In fact one of my favorite photos that I took this year was taken on a OnePlus smartphone. Beyond that the battery is 3800 milliamp hours and it also has warp charge 30T which gives you 70% of charge in just 30 minutes. Oxygen OS is also almost like a stock Android experience which I believe is actually my favorite Android experience because the additional features added in the interface is just very effective. So perhaps the phone that got the most hype this year was a Samsung Galaxy Fold. It was first announced in February at the S10 event, but ended up being released the first time, getting recalled, and then getting redesigned before a re-release that came out at the second half of the year. I've had this one right here for about three months now and I've had no problems at all, but it's honestly one of my favorite pieces of tech of the entire year because it is so much fun, but it definitely isn't the most practical phone out there because I just don't really know what to use with a large screen half the time, but just for like multimedia, going through Instagram, or just like taking it out and playing with it, it is such a cool piece of tech that I think is going to be a big part of the future. One of the first examples of folding phones this year was at CES where the Royal FlexPi was announced, as well as a Huawei phone which is going to be very interesting, but this is one of the first ones that has hit the market. The screen on the inside is 7.3 inches and the one on the outside is 4.6 and you've got a triple camera setup on the back as well as a dual camera setup for the front on the inside as well as another one on the very outside of the device. It's going to cost you a pretty petty, but it's something that is truly unique. You've got six cameras, a giant screen, and essentially a tablet on your pocket that just folds up and can take anywhere. So the second half of the year is when Apple X released their devices, and this year, obviously, there was the iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, as well as the iPhone 11, all of which I feel like have made one of the best iPhones in many years, despite it not being like a complete redesign. There's rumors though that there's going to be a budget model that comes out early next year, which I'm actually pretty excited for, because the iPhone 11 in the second half of 2019 is one of the phones that I've recommended to the most people. This right here though is the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and as you can see on the back, it's got this like frosted finish. You've also got a triple camera setup up and it is possibly one of the best cameras that I've seen on any smartphone to date. On the front it looks pretty much identical to the iPhone XS and XS Max. Not really a lot of change there but I feel like a lot of the best changes are under the hood and on the back. You've got the Apple A13 chip which is super powerful but the battery life on the 11 Pro Max especially is so much better than what I got on the XS Max and before I would have to charge my phone like twice a day but for the very first time I can use the iPhone an entire day and it'd be perfectly fine. The camera on the back is a triple setup and the main camera is amazing, does great job in white balance as well as exposure, as well as the ultra wide camera also doing a pretty good job and the third camera is a telephoto, a 2x zoom with a lower aperture as well which allows you to take much better photos than you were able to previously because it lets in much more light. What I also really like is that all three cameras are well calibrated so if you switch between like the 2x, the 1x and the ultra wide, the color balance and everything is going to be essentially the same. Video recording on the iPhone is also essentially the best on any smartphone that I've seen on the market to date and it is actually a pretty wide margin. So the next one that we have here is one that a lot of people were very excited about and it came out just after the iPhone and that is a Google Pixel 4 and 4XL. Google has been one of the best camera makers in the past couple years on the Pixel 2 as well as the Pixel 3. So obviously a lot of people were excited and waiting to see what Google would do this year and with the Pixel 4 they kept it very simple but it's still one of the best phones on the market right now. It comes in at a 5.7 and a 6.3 inch option at a full HD plus or quad HD plus resolution and honestly I'm actually having a lot of troubles deciding which one I actually like more. I've been really used to using large phones for the past three years but this phone right here in its small size just feels so nice and it almost just feels like the ideal size of any phone because in the past couple years especially phones have just gotten so big 
and even up to the point of 7.3 inches. The OLED display looks really good and it's one of the areas that I think Google has done a great job improving on because the previous generation had a couple issues here and there. The colors are accurate and vibrant, the display is bright, and you do also have the option between a few different color modes as well. For the very first time on a Google phone, you've got a 12.2 megapixel sensor as well as a 16 megapixel camera, with the other one being a telephoto at 2x, which I feel like is good for some people who like to do landscaping, as well as the intelligence and AI that go into Google devices, which do a very good job of processing and giving you like the lossless zoom. I mean, the low light is still one of the best, but I think where it really excels is portrait mode. I feel like the processing and the ability to trace, as you can see in an image here where I would consider it in a low light situation, looks better than most portrait photos I took on any phone. The battery size is 2800 milliamp hours on the smaller model and 3700 milliamp hours on the larger one, and I think the best part about it is that the speed on this Google device is unparalleled. It is a stock Android experience, it's extremely fast, and just like, it's hard to describe, but this phone is just so nice to use, and it's just like a very pleasant and quick experience that even compared to some other Android phones is non-comparable. You also have a 90 hertz refresh rate which in combination of stock Android just makes this phone feel so snappy with everything that you want to do. You also do have wave gestures now which surprisingly do work very well. You also do have wave gestures now for like skipping music and also waving to your device and using Google Assistant which actually does work very very well and I'm someone who is very skeptical with gestures and stuff like that but it actually does work, and as you can see here, it is super fast as well. If you guys like to win a Google Pixel 3a though, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and also follow me over on Instagram, and go and drop a comment down below with your Instagram handle, and I'll be picking a winner in two weeks. Of course, another phone that is also very popular at this time of year is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. This is a phone that kind of builds upon the Samsung Galaxy S10 and is like their official flagship where Samsung puts all of their technology and all the features into one big device. The Galaxy Note 10 Plus is personally my preference and it comes in at a screen size of 6.8 inches but although the screen size has gotten larger, the device itself hasn't because the screen literally goes to the edge in what they call an Infinity O where the camera is actually just a little circle in the middle and the display goes all around it and it looks amazing. It's got up to 12 gigs of RAM as well as a top end processor and also a 4300 milliamp hour battery so you can get through a full day no problem on this powerhouse device. Of course, you do have a triple camera setup, including a 16 megapixel wide, a 12 megapixel main, as well as a 12 megapixel telephoto, and the camera I would say ranks top three of any smartphone on the market right now. Of course, you can't forget about the S Pen, which is like a trademark feature of this device, and to be able to draw on it, write on it, but also do gestures and use it as a remote, just shows that even after so many generations, Samsung is still expanding the feature set of its best feature, which is the S Pen. Of course, you also have reverse wireless charging, which works great with other devices, or something like the Samsung Galaxy Buds, which can can charge wirelessly as well. If you guys want to protect any of these devices though, you can go ahead and pick up a D-Brand skin and they come in a lot of colors and textures to your liking and you can even do like a two-tone design that you can customize on their website. It just gives your phone a very nice customized and unique look while giving you some protection, so I'm going to drop a link to that down below. So after reviewing so many devices, I want to talk about kind of which one is the best at each category. And honestly, a lot of these are like a bit of a toss up, people have their own opinions and like certain types of preferences, but I'm going to tell you what my opinion is. And in terms of the best camera on the market at the moment, I would have to say that the iPhone 11 Pro is probably my favorite one. In the previous years, I would have argued that the Google Pixel probably did beat out the iPhone, especially last year. But this year, I feel like Apple's done a really good job and the cameras have always been very consistent by like the sharpness, the color rendition, and just like the accuracy and the amount of trust that you can have in the camera. I feel like Apple's done a great job here. Video recording is also probably the best on the iPhone because a lot of Android phones, I feel like, are just pretty behind in that aspect. And if you look at the quality, I feel like whether you like Android or iPhone, you gotta admit the iPhone definitely does it best. As for speed, I almost feel like it's objective because all the phones that we have right here have pretty much the top specs, whether it's the Apple A13 or the Snapdragon 855 line of processors. So the speed is really down to kind of the Android software that is installed as well as the skin. And I feel like the phone that gives you the fastest day-to-day -day experience is the Google Pixel 4. This device has literally nothing holding it back from a software standpoint. It is so smooth, it's got that 90 hertz display, and it just feels fast. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these other devices, the Samsung is just as capable, but this phone just feels so fast with everything that you want to do on it, and I feel like Google's always been kind of known for that category. As for the battery life, the phones that I have tested out right here, I would say the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus and the iPhone 11 Pro have probably the best battery life of these devices. The Google Pixel 4's battery is also pretty good, but a lot of that is due to software optimization because the battery size is a little bit smaller than what we expected at 3800 milliamp hours. 
The Samsung Galaxy Note 10 is a phone that takes up a lot of power because of the large screen, the high screen resolution, and everything, but the 4300 milliamp hour battery is able to get you through an entire day and maybe even to the next day just fine. For most users, I feel like you can say the same about the iPhone 11 Pro, but personally, because I do use my phone a lot, I can get through an entire day which is already pretty good. So at the end of the day, what are my favorite devices in each category and one that I would use? And I'll say my favorite phone overall is the iPhone 11 Pro. I have been an iPhone user for many years now, but I have tried and reviewed every Android device. And just, I feel like in previous years, there was issues with the iPhone that kind of really annoyed me and I wasn't sure if Apple was ever gonna fix them, such as the battery life or the lack of a third camera because I loved using ultra wide cameras on other devices. But this year, the battery life has been improved. The phone is still fast. You've also got the triple camera setup, and the camera has been improved to the point where it is pretty much setting the bar for the industry. So from the day it came out, the iPhone 11 Pro has been my daily phone. In terms of the best Android device though, it is kind of a mix between the Samsung Galaxy Fold as well as the OnePlus 7T. The OnePlus 7 Pro was a device that I liked a lot, but there's a few things about it such as the curved display and the screen being so big that made it a little bit hard to use if I wanted to use an Android device as an everyday. So this one right here has a 6.55 inch screen that goes pretty much to the edge. It's got the teardrop notch on the top, but it's got a 90 hertz refresh rate and it is nice and flat. But the Galaxy Fold is something that is just so rare right now and being someone who is very rarely excited by new tech because it comes out so often and we kind of review a little bit of everything. This is one where when it came, I was just like so excited. And I honestly can say that after being able to play with it for a few months, it does live up to expectation and I still like play around with it a lot. But otherwise, I feel like it's kind of up in the air and I honestly don't know what to expect for next year. So it's going to be pretty exciting to see. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video.